as long as I can keep him from going on the floor, I win. <laughs> So when it comes to people with no experience thinking that they can win fights against world champion martial artists, there's one name that stands supreme, and that is Michael Bisping, and I'll tell you exactly why. Because Michael Bisping is one of the only world champions in the UFC who was directly challenged by a civilian and attacked, and he let it slide. If you remember, Michael Bisping was punched in the face by a New Orleans uh, gangster, you know, who told Michael Bisbing that he shouldn't be taking pictures of him as Michael Bisbing was photographing, I believe, a, uh, a a band on the street. And, you know, someone was like, look at me. Hey, watch this, dog. <laughs> watch this. Hey, 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 Mr. Man from Britain, why don't you take that camera and put it away? I don't like people filming me. Bisbing, being Bisbing, was like, uh, uh, it's a free country, buddy. And, uh, you know, eventually the guy punched Bisping in the face and Bisping decided to allow the guy to live because he was feeling, you know, charitable and potentially maybe looked around and was like, eh, I got my family with me. Not a small probability that this guy's friends might shoot me with a gun if I, you know, took this guy's arm and removed it from his body and then beat him with it, you know, if I did that since I could very, very easily do that. Uh, but so, you know, Bisbing was directly challenged by that guy. Bisbing told the story and then that guy put out a video about it. You guys may remember I did a long video about it. And, you know, the guy, when he did the video responding, you know, he was like, hey, man, so I'm going to be straight. I didn't even know. I didn't even know that that was Michael Bisping and that he was in the UFC, the UFC fighter. But I will say, hey, yo, Michael Bisping. If you want to do this for real, I will meet you in the cage. And I promise I will blah, blah, blah. And you're like, hang on, you'll promise what exactly? I'm going to win that fight. You're going to win that fight. You're going to win that fight. You punched him straight in the face and he laughed at you when he wasn't defending himself. What do you think is going to happen if he actually fights back? You know? Well, he only has one eye, dog. Yeah, he won the world title with one eye. Okay? You not only have no chance in this fight, you will see another sunrise 100% dependent on if Bisbing allows you to live, okay? And it wouldn't take him very long to do it. Now, so Bisbing is an expert in this. And I bring this as the preamble because there is a guy in the NBA named uh, James something or other, James Johnson, who says that he would beat John Jones in a fight after only one year of training. And I realize how absolutely ludicrous this sounds. And I re I, I'm telling you, I read about Bisbing making fun of this guy, which is how I learned about this story. And then I looked a little bit deeper because I thought to myself, all right, this guy Bradley Martin just did this. It was just a publicity stunt. This guy is probably just trying to get publicity so that he can spin it into like a fight against like Jake Paul or something, right? Because there's, there's absolutely no way, there is absolutely no way that anyone is stupid enough to actually believe that they would win in a fight against John Jones with one year of training, it's impossible. It is not possible. However, I watched the video of this guy having this conversation and he is totally serious. And I can't stress this enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying so hard not to swear as much in my videos and it's really hard because what I wanted to say is, yeah, fucking right, guy. Are you kidding me? You're going to win in a fight against John Jones. He's serious. I'm going to show you the video. He was serious that he's going to win in a fight against John Jones. Okay. This guy. Okay. This guy right here. He's going to beat John Jones in a fight. Okay. I'm going to show you the video. Michael Bisbing uh, had some things here though. You know, he said, the only thing that's getting bounced is your head. And, uh, I think what he means is, you know, you dribble a basketball, but he meant like John Jones going to dribble his head off of the ground, which is obviously a matter of if John Jones decides to do that, then he can, of course. Now let's take a closer look at James Johnson. Now this guy right here, first thing I notice is he has full sleeve tattoos on both of his arms and he has a neck tattoo. But the real takeaway here is that anyone with full sleeve tattoos on both of their arms probably thinks they're a lot tougher than they are. They probably got their tattoos so that the world would think that they're tough when in reality, they're actually not. It's a shortcut to looking tough when you're not actually tough. That's what I see when I look at him. That's what I see when I look at anyone who has full sleeve tattoos on both arms. And I am going to tell you right now, he's not as dangerous as he thinks, bottom line.
What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, edit that out. No, I will. I will. Yeah, that's dumb. Okay. Oh, by the way, if you guys could subscribe to the channel real quick, I would really appreciate it because uh, I'm working hard, man. I'm working hard for you guys. I don't do this for myself. I do it for you guys. So if you could subscribe, that is the cost of watching my videos. It's not free. It just doesn't cost money. You just have to click a video. You know, click the button one time. You're done with it. You never have to think about it ever again. It's the only analytic I look at. I appreciate you guys. All right, so let's get serious about this guy. So like I said, uh, well, I probably edited it out. So let's just talk about the neck tattoos and the full sleeve. So he has full sleeve tattoos and he has a neck tattoo, which means that he fancies himself a tough guy, right? Fancies himself a tough guy. I did a little bit of homework and this gentleman happens to be 6'7", 240 pounds. Now, do you guys know a lot of people who are 6'7", 240 professional athletes that don't think of themselves as tough, right? Like they haven't been walking around their whole life like, man, I'll smash people, son. Because that is very rare, okay? Like athletes that are that big all think of themselves as killing machines. And the reason is because people have been telling them their whole life that they are super tough. And the reality is that they would win in a fight against 99.9% you know, of the population because of the size, strength, and speed, right? Just, just on that alone, size, strength, speed, you're going to win against 99.9 .9 out of 1,000 people that you would fight if you're, you know, up against a civilian. And so the thing about that is, though, is they have this very delusional viewpoint of their own danger that they pose towards everyone, right? Because here's the thing about that, right? So if you get someone who's, let's say, I don't know, six foot and... 200 pounds and they are highly trained in martial arts and then you take your size and your speed at 6'7", 240 and you put it up against this person who's six inches shorter, 40 pounds lighter, you know, similar speed, they're going to use you as a blow-up doll because that's the thing about martial arts. It is there to overcome size and speed advantages with technique. So, if, let's say, somebody who already had a completely delusional viewpoint of their own danger was to go up against someone who is, I don't know, 6'5", 250, and the greatest living heavyweight fighter of all time, I'm sorry, greatest living fighter of all time, and if that person, the NBA player, were to be able to convince themselves that they would win in a fight against said greatest fighter of all time, you might be looking at the most delusional human being in the history of athletics, okay? Because this guy, honest to God, thinks that he would win in a fight against John Jones. Now, I know, I'm telling you, I realize that there's no way that this is real, right? Like, I'm sure that you guys are watching this. You're like, there's no way that this guy actually believes that. And it's like, here's the thing about that. He does, okay? I watched his video, which we're going to watch in a second, okay? So first though, I just want to say that what Bisbing said is completely accurate. So Bisbing said, because the guy said he needs one year of training and he wins in a fight against John Jones. Hilarious, okay? So uh, Bisbing says, give me a year, give me a fucking break. Uh, that's what we really need right here. Listen, this James Johnson, I'm sure he's a lovely guy. I really am, I'm not. If he, if he, Seriously, is that overconfident about his ability to win in a fight against the greatest living fighter? I bet you he's a delusional, arrogant fucking asshole. Uh, I really am. But this is hilarious. We've all watched a martial arts film, and at the end, we're all hyped up. We want to go. We watch Rocky. We, we, watch, we start shadow boxing and think we're all a badass. Go down to the pub, have a few beers. We think we could take this guy on. The list goes on. Uh, I had a little look on Tapology. Tapology registers all fights. Okay, because James Johnson claimed he was 20-0 in kickboxing, 7-0 in MMA. Really? I mean, because you know the like, like, I'll get back to that in a second. Uh, you don't have to be a, the, an NBA player, someone famous. You can be anybody and have one fight and you will be on Tapology. You will be in the Sherdog database. But when I go to Tapology, there's a lot of James Johnsons and none that are 7-0. There are none that are 6-8. And there's none that are basketball players. This guy's having a laugh. He's out of his goddamn mind. Right. And so here's the other thing about that, right? So I just want to pause there just for a second. And I promise we're going to show this guy's interview. I promise. So here's the deal. To think that you could win in a fight against John Jones shows an absolute level of ignorance in martial arts that is so absurd that it's kind of funny to even talk about. But that level of ignorance 
also would extend to not knowing that you can't just say that you're 20 and 0 in kickboxing and 7 and 0 in MMA without me and Bisping and anybody who knows anything about this sport being able to just go look it up and go lie. Hey, what? So 20 and 0 in kickboxing? Like, what organization was that? Oh, it was in this uh, this underground Kumite. Oh, it was in an underground Kumite. Yeah, yeah, Kumite, Kumite. Yeah, Kumite. Tell me about your opponents. Well, uh, you know, the first first fight I had, I had it up against uh, this this like American guy's white trucker guy. He had a bandana. You know, he's a really, really tough guy. You know, he was really a lot of fun, but I had to take him down. Had to take him down. You know, then I fought against this guy who was kind of like a monkey guy. You know, he's like a monkey guy, and he was going like this, and, uh, you know, had to break him off a little something, something. Had to break him off a little bit. Then I went up against this, like, Iranian guy. You know, he had actually broken a guy's leg, like, broke his shin in a previous fight, took him down. The main guy I had to win in the, you know, in the boss fight was this huge Chinese guy with huge pecs. And I took him out too. He tried to blind me. He threw dust in my face, tried to blind me. And I had to kind of, you know, go like this and go back to my training. Because when I was training, I had to train blindfolded. You know, it was a really advanced training that I was doing. And uh, you're like, yeah, that's blood sport. What? You're describing blood sport. No. No, no, no. I, this is me and Kumite. Nope, you're describing blood sport. No. This is my kickboxing record. Okay. So tell me more. Well, so in another one, this guy who was a pr- big, huge kickboxer, he had a tail, you know, a ponytail like this, fought just like this. He actually, I saw him before the fight, kicking, kicking this post, and it was breaking the entire building down. He fought my brother first, and he paralyzed him. And I actually had to go train your, that's kickboxer. What? Now you're describing kickboxer. What was the guy's name? His name was Tong Po. You're talking about kickbox. I'm not talking about kickbox. I'm talking about my kickboxing career. Okay, James Johnson. Anyway, so uh, that's the long way of saying this guy is talking fucking nonsense. There's absolutely no way this is true. Um, so that is that. Now he goes into, uh, you know, John Jones, greatest of all time. John Jones undefeated, Bisping said, and, uh, you know, yada, yada, yada. All the things that you know we would say. But first, let's go here. I think that Francis and Gaunt, Wow, I just had the best idea ever. So if he can beat John Jones, then he could probably beat Francis Ngannou. Francis Ngannou should welcome him into BFL. You want to see a PFL fight that sells some pay-per-views? Have it against this NBA guy that thinks he can beat John Jones. See how that goes for you. Um, so Bradley Martin struggles to grapple Joe Rogan's 56-year-old sidekick. Wait a minute, who's that? Well, I don't want to sidetrack this whole thing. Uh Who is Joe Rogan's sidekick? Oh my God, against comedian Brian Cowan. (laughs) He's, uh, I mean, listen, dude. I didn't want to say, I didn't want to put myself in this, but uh, anyway. Okay, so we're going to go to uh, this video now. I'll probably put this at the beginning just so that I don't make you guys wait through the entire video. But let's watch this dimwit. actually 100% seriously say that he could beat John Jones in a fight after one year of training and he's totally serious. Let's watch. I think I could beat him for real. But like I said, with a year of training defense, I just need ground defense. I think the scary thing, because we're big athletes, it's like, okay, JJ can move how you move and he's 6'8". Right. That's the scary part, like, where, okay, he can do everything you do, and he's 6'8". Like, that's where the, the big difference comes in. Yeah, and the opposite is, he started learning how to use your hands and your feet, what, after college? Like, I've been punching and kicking since I was five, six years old. So, like, Ooh. the same thing for me, though, is the opposite for him, because he's been wrestling for that long. Learning yeah, all his yeah, wrestling yeah. moves and things like that for that long. For me, you know what I mean? I started learning the wrestling game and all that in middle school, the jujitsu. You know, he has a big advantage there because no one wants to get on the floor, but as long as I can keep him from going on the floor, I win. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's too good, dude. That is too good. Hey, man, look. I'm obviously going to have a major striking advantage on John Jones because in middle school, I took karate class. He hadn't started doing kickboxing and all that until after college. So obviously, ipso facto, I'm a better striker than John Jones. I'm sorry, go over that one more time. I said, 
when John Jones had not even done any kickboxing, I was in karate class. What age were you there? Man, I was like 10. You were 10. Yeah, I was 10. So like probably like nine years before John Jones ever even threw a punch. Okay, but you're a professional basketball player. Right. So how much martial arts did you do after you were like, I don't know, 13? I mean, listen, a lot. Really? Yeah, man, I'm 20 and 0 in kickboxing and 7 and 0 in mixed martial arts. Hey, you know that there's a database I can look that up and verify that that's not true if you're making it up. Say what? You hear me? Like, if it's not true, I'll be able to look it up very, very quick. As a matter of fact, here, let me do it. No, 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 you don't need to do it, dude. You don't even need to look that up, man. Where I fought was actually in the Kumite in Japan in an underground league against a guy named Tong Po. All right, just stop. Stop it. Continue with your logic. So I'm saying, John Jones had not even started striking when I was in my heyday already a black belt in karate. You were a black belt in karate when you were 12? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Ipso facto, I'm better at striking. Right. And so all I have to do is just make sure that he can't get it to the ground, and that way I'll win. Hey, have you heard of Cyril Gone? Uh, no. Okay, so Cyril Gone is the guy that John Jones beat to become the heavyweight champion. He is a world-class kickboxer who would decapitate you in probably, let me think, how long would it take for the two of you to meet in the center of the octagon? Man, I don't know, like maybe like three seconds. So he'd decapitate you in probably four seconds. I, I mean, I don't necessarily agree with that. Okay, but I, I'm telling you that that's like an objective fact, right? Like I know more about this than you. And so Cyril Gone was able to hold off John Jones for about 90 seconds total before he got strangled. As a matter of fact, what the fuck are we talking about? You have no chance. What are you talking about? You sound like a fucking idiot, okay? You have no chance. It's laughable. Don't ever talk about this ever again. All you sound like to anyone who knows what they're talking about is a fucking ignorant moron who literally knows absolutely nothing about fighting. You're just embarrassing yourself. You're too ignorant to know that, so don't talk about it anymore. Hey, how do you think I would do against you, though? Now, I really do love these conversations. There's just hilarious because there's not many things that people can be so utterly delusional about their own skill set in. That's why this is so fun is because everyone likes to think of themselves as a tough guy. Everyone. And it's a lie that you tell yourself due to lack of being tested, right? Like it's, that's all it is. That is literally all it is. It's a lie that people tell themselves who have never been tested because in the times where they've been tested very small, they've come out on top. And you're like, listen, dude, listen, 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 okay? Someone coming up to you in a bar, throwing a drink on you and you punch them in the face and they fell down, that is not being tested. That was just you being willing to punch a person, okay? To know where you stand, you need to go into a place where people train martial arts and get into an enclosed place or to agree to terms where you're going to engage in some form of combat against someone and then see how you do. Because it'll be so shocking to you how ill-equipped you are to fight someone who actually knows how to fight, then it'll break your little brain. And so that's why a person like me can tell you objectively that you have absolutely no chance against a professional fighter, much less, not even just a professional, just how about anyone who has serious, mar now, he says he's 20 and 0, kickboxing, 7 and 0, martial arts, mixed martial arts. It's such a, a, an easily provable objective lie that I just assume he might not have like any experience at all, right? Now, if he, if he really has been kickboxing for fucking 30 years, then, you know, that's obviously different. But I don't believe him because anyone who had been kickboxing for 30 years would know he has no chance against John Jones. That is why I assume it's a lie, okay? Because anyone with the experience you're claiming to have would know you have literally zero, not one, not one percent of one percent chance of beating John Jones in a fight. It's so dumb. It is laughable. I am very glad that you did this because I got to, you know, crank a video about it. And it's a funny video, you know, at least funny for me. You know, funny for me. I got to pretend like he was, you know, telling the story like he was at Kumite. Like, that shit's funny. I think that's funny. When I watch my own stuff back, that's the kind of thing that I laugh at my own jokes on. So, you know, James Johnson, thank you for that. Anyway, uh, that is what we've got for now. And uh, I appreciate you guys. Love you. Bye.